Sometimes I feel I have the best job in the world because I get to be here and do what I love. Welcome to My Place on Earth, a series where I'll be meeting nature enthusiasts from around the world who want to share their amazing wildlife on their doorsteps. In today's episode, I'm joined by a remarkable conservationist all the way coming to us live from Ecuador to talk about the conservation of the critically endangered brown-headed spider monkey. It gives me great pleasure to welcome on Sitlali. Hello! Hi, Hannah, how are you? Thank you very much for this invitation. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on. We're so, so pleased. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. Now, the brown-headed spider monkey, one of seven species of spider monkey in South America, critically endangered, probably a little less known to many people. So could you tell us a bit about the species? Uh, yes, of course. Well, the brown-headed spider monkey is part of a group of primates that are characterized by uh, their long uh, limbs. They are also characterized by only having four fingers in their hands. And they are normally found in primary forests, especially this species. And, uh, well, they are critically endangered. It is one of the most endangered primates in the world. And here in Ecuador, unfortunately, it is one of the, well, it is uh, the most endangered primate in the country. I didn't know that. I mean, how, what, what are the population numbers in Ecuador at the moment then? Well, it is estimated that there are uh, at the most 280 individuals in the wild. Goodness me, that is such a shame. And that's the thing with these species, you know, they, they're lesser known, but if you don't conserve them, nobody will ever know about them. That's why we're so pleased that you're here on with us today to tell us about them. <laughs> So listen, you've sent us through some clips of their behavior and this is fantastic. So tell us a little bit about what's happening here. Well, here uh, we found this, uh, these spider monkeys and they, you can see that they are grooming. So this is a behavior found in a, in a, lot, of the, in a lot of primates. And it is something that they do to keep good relationships um, within the group. In a lot of primates, you can see that this behavior, it is uh, one of the main parts of their, of their day. And uh, yes, that relaxes them and uh, strengthen, strengthens the, their links, their bonds uh, within the group. Now, brown-headed spider monkeys, they do have a really important role in the forest, don't they? Uh, yes, they do. They uh, are also called engineers of the forest because they have this ability to disperse a large amount of, of seeds, especially large ones, because they travel a lot during the day. Uh, they can disperse uh, the seeds that they feed. We also know that a lot of the species of this uh, Choco forest depend on the brown-headed spider monkeys to uh, be dispersed. Hence, their survival also depends on the brown-headed spider monkeys. So the knock-on effect of losing the brown-headed spider monkey will and could affect the entire ecosystem. Uh, yes, definitely. That is why it's also so important to, to protect them. So you've sent us a little clip of what you get up to in your day-to-day -day life. So let's take a little look at that. I am here at the Tesoro Escondido Reserve. Uh, I am carrying out a primate census. Uh, we do this every week. We walk transects of um, four kilometers and if we find any groups of uh, spider monkeys we count them. We write down uh, their behavior and especially if they're feeding on any fruits we collect them and then we add them to our reforestation program. I just arrived at this, um, what we call the El Mirador, which is a, a really nice sighting spot on this trail. And we just heard the brown-headed spider monkeys uh, shout or call. They have this long distance call um, that they use to, to communicate to other groups. 
sometimes we record these calls and we use them as playback so we play the call and when we get an answer we know uh, there are groups there we carry we do this method uh, whenever we are in a new place where we don't know that there are spider monkeys there or when we carry out rapid census in some areas of the reserve sometimes i feel i have the best job in the world because i get to be here and do what i love Wow, I mean, you said it there yourself, you really do have one of the best jobs in the world, tr truly. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but of course, as many species in South America as a whole, brown-headed spider monkeys are facing so many threats. So what's really affecting them right now? Well, this species has lost uh, over 80% of their original habitats. These spider monkeys need continuous and primary forests. So the timber extraction and the land use conversion to monocultures is one of the main threats that they face. And additionally, they are also threatened by hunting activity and by illegal pet uh, trade. And the, the area that you work in and monitor them, that's, that's protected, isn't it? It is protected. We, uh, the Soros Condido Reserve protects around 2,000 hectares of, of primary forest and we work together with the Hokotoko Foundation and together we protect around 10,000 hectares uh, in the last remnants of the lowland Choco forests. Uh, and we are building now a corridor towards a national protected area, which is the Cotacachi Cayapas National Park. And when you build this connectivity with different actions, not only land purchase, but also reforestation uh, and working with the local communities, then uh, the idea is to ensure uh, that, this, that these spider monkeys will, will survive in the long term. And your work is so inspirational, but how did you first get into conserving brown-headed spider monkeys and why are they so important to you? Uh, well, I arrived to Ecuador with my PhD thesis and I carried out this field work in Tesoro Escondido when there was no reserve. I lived there for a year and it became very, very close to, to, to me, to my heart, these spider monkeys. They are very special when you see them, how they behave or how they move to the, in the forest, the intelligence that they have you know, and how important they are for this forest as well. When I saw that this place was so special, I decided to dedicate my life basically to, to protecting these species and this, and this forest specifically. Well, listen, thank you so, so much for coming on with us today. We really, really appreciate it and keep up the fantastic work there on the front line in Ecuador. Thank you so much, Tali. Thank you. Thank you for this invitation and it was a pleasure to uh, sharing this with you. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Join me next time where I'll be talking to another amazing conservationist and discovering another incredible part of the world. And if you have a special place on earth that you would like to share with us, then please do get in touch with us by commenting below. But I will see you next time.